Thank you everyone for being here this morning. Thank you for your patience on getting started. Um, my name is Caitlin. I am the Epilepsy Program Manager for Valley Children's Hospital and really excited to be here this morning to um, introduce our artist, um, Hilda, and thank you so much to our sponsors, ASI and um, SK Life Sciences for providing this opportunity so that we can just hang out, have fun, learn some new painting techniques. And Ms. Silda has been here um, with us before and it's just wonderful. So I really appreciate um, you doing this for us and having some fun. And I'm excited to see what we're here to learn for. So thank you so much, Hilda. Feel free to take over. Okay, well, thank you and happy new year. Thanks for uh, joining us this morning. Um, today's lesson is a watercolor lesson and it's um, a hummingbird with some blossoms. And in this lesson, I'm gonna teach you how you can um, create a beautiful painting with four colors. Um, the colors that I'm going to be using are these right here, uh, imperial purple, new gombage, a turquoise blue and a perm rose. Now you don't have to have these colors. You can use whatever colors you like uh, because you can just create a different painting with beautiful colors that will just look just as pretty. Um, in this lesson, the main thing that I want you to concentrate on is letting the colors kind of bleed in the back, back, background. Um, the background will be done the second part of the lesson. We're going to start first with the bird. I'm going to show you how to mix the color on your little palette. We are using today a size eight brush. And if you have a size four or a two brush, that'll be great because this is gonna be used for the little details, the finer details, and this will be used last. So mainly I'm painting with a size eight today. And um, so let's start. So all of you should have gotten the outline and traced it onto your watercolor paper. And here it is, and here we go. So first what I want you to do is grab some water onto your palette and just kind of put it in to where you can have a your where you can have a mixing area. So what I want you to first do is touch a little bit of your yellow and mix a little puddle like this. Okay. And clean your brush in the water, clean it. And then go for a blue, turquoise blue. It's beautiful. And watch what happens when I mix these two together. Okay, I'm taking a little bit of the blue over here and I'm mixing it. And look at how beautiful this, this green, kind of like an iridescent green. And that's what we want to put on top of the bird's head and on the back of him. Okay, and we're going to put some yellow in the front of his belly. And then right here and here, we're going to put purple and the perm rose color. So now what I want you to do is clean your brush and mix a little bit of a pink or a red, if you have a red or a pink. See how I'm mixing that? Now clean your brush again and mix a little puddle of purple. This is so that you can have your colors ready to go when we start to paint. So they're all ready to go. Okay, so here we go. So now, <clears throat> I like to have a little paper towel so I can take the extra water off my brush. And because you have these colors mixed already, you're ready to lift up with your brush some paint. See how I have paint on the brush now? And what I want you to do is put yellow on the belly of the hummingbird here, just like this. See how I'm doing this? Just putting yellow here. Okay. Now, pick up some of the yellow with the blue that you mixed and put it right over here. Look at how I'm using my brush. I'm just kind of like using my brush like a mop, kind of just dragging the paint. And if you need more paint, grab some of the more, the more paint that you have mixed. Okay, and see how I'm just, dragging my brush around like this. Grab more paint if you want. This is why it was important to have little puddles of paint so that you could just pick it up and um, put it on. So look at how I'm using the point of my brush. See how I'm using the point? 
not hard. See this? Okay. If this is too light, what you could do is you could also clean your brush and you could mix more yellow. You could always drop a little bit more yellow in different areas while it's wet, see what happens. Look how beautiful that is. And you don't have to do it everywhere. You can just do it in a few areas, okay? Now we're gonna move on to applying some pink here and then some purple uh, around the bottom and then more of this turquoise blue on top. So with your brush again, let's add a little bit more turquoise blue at the very top and paint around the eye. Don't try not to touch the eye. So now I'm just painting on top, the, like the crown of the, the head of the hummingbird here. See how I'm using the point very gently to go around the eye? And just like that, that shape. So you see? So we're gonna use this area for the pink and the purple now, all right? So now I'm gonna clean the brush again. And remember when I, I said to have these little puddles of paint ready, this is why it's important because I'm taking the extra water off my brush and now I can lift some some of this beautiful pink. And I'm just gonna drop the pink right along this area and let, let it touch the yellow and let it touch the turquoise, just like this. And I'm leaving this little shape here for the purple. And now with my brush, I'm gonna pick up the purple. Okay, and let's, drop the purple there. With the tip of the brush, the point of the brush, gently just drop it right in there like this. See that? Just to the wing. And let the colors mingle. See what happens when they start to blend together? They are just beautiful. Now, right here in this little spot here, I'm gonna add a little bit more of this um, turquoise green. So I always clean my brush before I touch another color and wipe it and just gently with the point, putting that color in right there, just dropping it in. Now, if you wanted to at this point, you could drop in a little bit more of your turquoise color on top because it's wet. So let's do that just so that you can see what will happen. So here I have more of my color, it's on the brush. And this is still wet. And I'm just gonna drop some color at the top with the point of the brush. See this? Gently. That works a lot better, Hilda, if you have it up like that, because when the paint's wet, it glares it all out, apparently. Mm -hmm. So that looks okay. really well. It looks really good like that, if that's okay. helpful. Okay. So see, look how beautiful that is. And if you wanted to build this area darker also, you could do that right now too. So you could just clean the, the brush again in water, take that color off, wipe it, and pick up a little bit of the pink or red color, what you're using. And it's just on the tip of the brush. And again, watch, I'm just tapping it, just gently tapping it. Okay, so this is becoming really rich with color now. This is still wet. So if I wanted to, again, I could drop in some darker purple. Clean your brush. Pick up a little bit of purple with the tip of your brush and just gently tap it in. Okay, look at that, awesome. Okay, now I'm gonna move on to uh, this wing right here. And then this one, because this part of, of the bird right here is still wet and I don't want it to bleed. So we're gonna do this wing here. And we're gonna use um, the turquoise color mixed with a little bit of the yellow. We're gonna put on um, a wash and then we're gonna let that dry a little bit. And then we're gonna use some purple to uh, make some fine details there. This wing here, we're going to use it lighter. We're going to have a, you know, a different value, lighter against dark right here. 
So let's go. So mix um, turquoise with that yellow. See how I'm mixing it? And you don't wanna have a little puddle like this. You wanna have enough paint to paint this big shape here. So I'm gonna turn my painting this way so you can see how I'm gonna use it. And I have the paint on my brush and I'm gonna use the side of my brush to go this way, directional, this way, okay? So here we go. Uh, again, look at the point of the brush where it's touching the purple. I'm just laying it there and just drag it. You know, you can just do this if you want, you know, just drag the paint. Look at how I'm using the brush. Now, if you don't have enough paint, pick up a little bit more. Look at how I'm using my brush strokes. See that? Look at the point. Now I'm gonna come this way into it. This is so much fun. I just love painting with watercolors. It's relaxing. Um, I want you to love this, to keep painting. I'll give you more ideas when we're done painting this, this bird, what you can do. So there's the wing, okay? And again, if you wanted to build up one area stronger with value, what, what you would do next while it's still wet, is just pick up some more color, okay? And drop it in a few places. You know, just have fun, experiment, um, have fun. See how I'm just with the brush now, how I'm just, but I'm letting some of those values peek through. See the brush? And just like that, just leave this one alone, this wing. Okay, all right. <clears throat> so now we want to paint this wing a little bit lighter, more like, <clears throat> a pinky kind of a value in here. So with your pink, clean your brush again. Okay, I'm just bringing in some pink to make it a light value. So the more water you use with the pigment of the paint, the lighter the color will be. The less water and more pigment, more of a medium value. And of course, less water will give you a darker value. So again, this wing now, and I want you to be very careful with this side right here of the wing because this is wet and this might be a little wet. So just, you know, just kind of be a little careful when you paint that wing. So very watery. And look at how much water there is on the brush with the, for the wing, for that shape. And again, I'm starting with the point or you can go this way, like this, directional, okay? So here's the point right up to the head, and I'm just moving the brush alongside the edge there. That way you can cover a lot of area. See how I'm just kind of using the brush now? To like, almost like, a, I like to say mopping, you know, just kind of like, you know how you take a mop and you can just drag it around. So here's pink. And what I like about, using this pink value here is that it's complementary to green because red and green are complementary colors. So there you go, that's the inside of the wing, but let's make it more fun. And now using less water and more pigment, you can, you can um, do these little lines if you want, you can drop in more color if you want in different areas, you know, just play and have fun with it. See, just, just try it, you know, explore. You know, just dropping a, a different little uh, pink value in different areas. You know, I don't I want you to, I don't want it to be perfect. You know, just want you to understand what watercolors does. You know, they, the colors mingle with each other and they bleed with each other. So look at what, what you've already probably done is really beautiful. Um, okay, so now this area has dried and we're gonna move on to the eye and the beak. And then we're gonna go back in here and do some detail on the wings. 
and then we're going to do the background. So with the eye, I'm going to first um, show you here on my little demo sheet that I have here. You can go to a smaller brush or you can use a Sharpie pen if you want, or just a regular black pen. Um, but if you have a little brush like this, you know, you can get in there and go around the little white um, circle that I have there for the bird. And so what I did is I just used purple, the, the deep color purple. See how I just got purple on the brush here? And I'm using the point just to go around that little eyeball you know, the little white dot that's there. So you can do it with the brush very gently. Or like I said, if you're not comfortable using a real um, small brush, you can always just use a Sharpie and go around, you know, that little shape like that. Okay, and then we're gonna show, I'm gonna show you the colors that you're gonna mix for the beak. So I'm gonna use my little brush here and I'm gonna do the eye now on the bird with just the purple. And I'm gently going around and you might have to add a little bit of water if it's too dry, but just go around that little dark circle. I mean, you know, the little white area there, gently. This is, requires a lot of control. And if it's not dark enough the first time, let it dry because after it dries, you can go back in there and you know add um, more paint. And then your second layer, or if you need a third layer, it will definitely be darker. And then what I like to do is I like to put like little dots around the eye, just, you know, just to um, make it look a little bit more nicer. Just, tiny little dots, you know, going around the eyeball, but you don't have to do this right now. You could do that later. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you the colors that you need for its beak. And if you mix um, a little bit of yellow with purple, you're gonna get like a grayish color. So watch, um, here's a little bit of yellow and I'm just gonna take a little bit of this purple and see how you get like this grayish color. So purple with yellow will make a grayish color. And again, I'm using my smaller brush. And what you're gonna do is you're, again, this requires a lot of control. I like to put my pinky you know, up against the paper for control. And I'm using the point and I'm gently going along the line of the beak. The point, think of it as a, like I'm um, using it like a pen or a pencil, a lot of control. So there's the beak. And if you want to add little details, darker details, you could just grab a little bit of the purple, add it there. You, know, you, could, you could make the bottom a little bit darker. So there's the beak. Okay, so now what I wanna do, are we all together? Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some details on this wing here and this one here, and then we're gonna go with the background. All right, so I'm switching back over to my size eight brush and this is sort of dry now. And just with some of the colors that you still have on your palette, you know, grab a little bit of purple or you don't have to use purple. You can use pink on this wing if you'd like. Whatever you decide, you know, whatever you might like. And so I have paint on the brush now and I'm gonna turn my painting this way so you can see. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a, uh, some lines here just, you know, to make it look like, um, you know, part of the feathers. So gently, I'm just doing this. And, and notice how I'm just, barely touching the top of the paper. See how I'm gen gently touching the paper?
just like just like fairly touching the top of the paper. And then if you wanted to, you could add a little bit darker purple in here. So I'll do that for contrast to give contrast here because these two colors right now are the same value. So now I'm just taking purple here and I'm connecting it with this part of the purple. See that? Just a little bit, not a lot. You don't have to. Okay, so now we're gonna do this wing here. And you can make this area much darker if you like. You could just, um, you know, grab some more of the purple and drop it in there while it's wet. See how the colors just kind of bleed. This is what, what's so nice about watercolors is that you can just, you know, let those colors kind of bleed. And then up here at the top, you can add uh, purple also, like I did here. But I think that I will wait to see what this background is going to be because this background could be dark, darker, and I don't, you know, want to do that yet. So now let's do the other wing. And let's just grab a little bit of this purple again, very light. And it's on my brush. And we're gonna just gently add some little wing details. See how I'm just kind of flicking it? And that's all you need, just a little bit of detail, not a lot. Okay. All right, so now we're ready to do the fun part that I just love doing. And this is where you're gonna learn how to do negative um, painting shapes. So you might wanna clean a little bit of your palette if it's got too much paint on there, because you're gonna use these beautiful colors again. And you're gonna use, you're gonna wanna use your size eight brush, not a small one. And I think what I'll do first is I'll show you how to do um, this part of the painting first, because this is still a little wet from the wings. So let's do this half here, this half of the painting, and then we'll do the other half. And this is gonna require a lot of paint. So you're gonna need to make uh, a lot of um, puddles of paint and have it ready to go onto the watercolor paper. So let's do that first. So I'm going to move this so you can see a little bit better and notice how I'm just going to use water. And we're using all the colors that we used on the hummingbird for harmony. And this is fun. I just love mixing colors. So I'm cleaning my brush again. Every time that I touch a different color, um, I always clean my brush. So here's yellow. We're going to use yellow. Let's make some purple over here. Look at this beautiful purple. I even like how the colors blend on the, on the palette here. Look at how beautiful this looks here. And this is kind of what we wanna do on the watercolor paper. So now this is the, that beautiful turquoise color. Okay. So look at all this paint we have here. I hope that you're catching up to me and hanging in there with the pace that I'm going. So look at all these colors and you're gonna add all that color here. And, but what I want you to do first before you start putting it on there is notice how these flowers here are lighter in value versus the background. And notice how I added darker value here to bring these out. And that's what I'm gonna show you how to do, okay? So your first wash will be a light wash. Like, see what I did here? This was the demo. So I'm gonna show you first on here and then we're gonna do it on here. So what you'll do is you'll get water on your, you know, the shape, just water. And then you're gonna pick up the paint and you're gonna drop that into the water area and let it mingle and bleed. Okay, so now 
let's do it on this paper here. Okay, so these colors are all blended. And what you're gonna do is just with water, just with water, start to add it to and around the bird. Even go on the on top of the the sketched out flower there. See how I'm just using water? And And let's just do a little section at a time because I think trying to do a big area might be too difficult. So here's water. Where there's water, the paint's gonna move. So now you have all these colors uh, mixed and what you're gonna do is you can just lift it up with your brush and you can just start to drop the colors around. change the colors, you know, you can, um, you can add purple now if you want, or blue. I think adding some purple uh, by the yellow is great for contrast. And see how I'm just using my brush, the side of my brush, and just kind of meshing, mushing the colors together, or, and then you can always turn your paper. And again, you can just take water. First add water, this is called wet into wet, where you're adding water onto the paper first, and then you're adding um, the paint. Just have fun, you know, pick up a color that you like. Um, if your colors get too muddy, here on your palette like they are with mine, you can just wipe it down. So that way you can get um, cleaner colors, cleaner yellow, for example, like this. And I'm just gonna put this yellow over here. See what's happening? Okay, now I'm gonna move, I'm gonna keep moving this way. I'm gonna turn this way. So I'll grab some of this color. And this is just letting the colors blend. Now I didn't add any water here. So I better, huh? We better just add the water there because we want this to be wet into wet. So here's the water all along here. I'm covering a big area. And let's add some pink down here. I'm using the side of my brush, just dragging my brush around. Okay, I'm gonna turn it this way now. And you could also move your paper to let those colors kind of bleed with each other. See how they're just kind of bleeding around. Okay, I'm gonna put water now on this side, this little shape here. I hope I'm going at a good pace for everybody and not going too fast. I'm using this, the, the brush on its side, laying it down, just kind of dragging the water. Now I'm gonna pick up some color with my brush. Pick up a different color over here. Let's add some more purple. Yellow on this side. Okay. Let's go over here and I'm gonna switch it around. Water. The point. I don't want to use pink here because then it will look like one big shape. So I'm going to use purple in here.
water. And if you get too much water in one area, you can use um, a tissue just to dab it and to lift it off when there's too much water there. So this is the first wash right here of um, your background painting. And um, now the next step is for you to understand what negative painting is. So I'll set this down. And normally uh, what you could do if your paper curls up like this, what you could do is you could take take a watercolor skater board like this and use tape um, to tape it down on all the sides so it doesn't curl up on you. But I didn't do that because I wanted to have the space here to um, demo for you. So this is the, the, the first background wash. And so now what you're gonna do is um, you're gonna start to develop darker values. So see how this is darker compared to some of these other background washes. And I am, and I purposely did that around the flower shapes to bring out the shapes of the flower. And then I also use it in some areas of the bird to make the bird stand out a little bit too. So now what you're going to do is um, you're going to mix a darker value to go around those shapes. And um, so what you're going to do is with your paint, you're going to mix um, darker values. So that means more pigment and less water. So here's how I do it. So, and I'm gonna use purple. So look at how much pigment I'm taking over here. Can you see this right here? Yeah, I think you can. And yeah, look at how rich this color is. It's really, it's thicker. When I mix it, it's not so watery. I don't have a lot of water and watch what happens. So, be, well, before I do that, on this little demo sheet here, this dried and what negative painting is, is bringing out shapes. So like, for example, here, I'm, I can see that there's like a little yellow flower. There's like a little purple center there. And you could even sketch this out here. If it dries, you know, on your paper, you can sketch out a flower. You can do something like this. Now watch, because this is just a demo, but you know, we have time for me to show you this. So I'm just going to do this. And then, ooh, let's pretend, look at this right here. This could be a, a flower bud this way. This is just to give your mind a little break from what we're doing so that you can see and understand what um, negative painting is. And let's just pretend like this is a petal over here and over here. Okay, so this is what this is what negative painting is. So let's pretend like this is your first wash and I just, you know, sketched in some shapes. You could even do another one over here if you wanted to, you know, you could do another one over here on this side. Okay, so then when you add another layer of paint, these are going to come forward. Okay, so this is what negative painting is. So you'll grab some paint and then if you paint around that shape, watch what happens. It starts to come forward. Look at how I'm using the, the tip of the brush. And then you could blend out, see these hard edges. What you could do is after you take the paint off your brush and it's clean, you can just take the edge and press and pull that edge out so that you don't have a hard edge and you have a softened um, edge there. See how I did that? So that's where how you get a soft edge. Okay. And then if you wanted to, you could put a, the center there. You could do a different color. You know, I'll show you how to do that and how to do all these little fun extra details. And so then there's another one here. And then again, you can just go on the outside of that. And these don't have to be this shape of flower. You can make these uh, flower shapes any shape that you like. You know, if there's a certain flower that you like, like tulips or daffodils, 
how beautiful would that be, you know, to have this one looking like a tulip or a daffodil. And so then here's another uh, flower shape. And just to show you now, I'm just demoing first before I actually do. And so then you would bring this shape out. You could even do this. You could even go with the blue on that side over here. See that? So this is what negative painting is, is about bringing out shapes from behind. All right, so back to this one here. And I'm mixing a real dark purple. And now I'm going to start doing that around these flowers and watch what happens. There's a lot of water here, so let me uh, dab that. And here we go. I'm using the point. Doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, this is supposed to be a fun art lesson. So don't put a lot of stress on yourself. You have the outline, you can do this again. You can watch the video and go back and try it again. But look how fun this is. And then there's a hard edge here, but don't worry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna blend that out. And I'm gonna go with some, a little bit of pink now over here on this side. You don't have to just go with the um, purple all the way around. You can change the color. You can go with a darker, richer pink if you want. You know, let's just do that. Let's just add a little bit of pink over here. Okay, and now with that hard edge, my brush is clean and all it has is water and I'm using it like a little mop to mop that edge. See how I'm pressing and I'm barely touching the tip of that edge with the point of my brush and I'm kind of just wiggling it to soften that edge. See how I did that? Okay, I'll show you over here again. So just with water, my brush and the tip, press and kind of just wiggle that edge, that hard edge. Okay, there's a hard edge there. So I'm gonna pull it down. Now you can keep um, adding if it's not dark enough. This is where the focal is, the focal area, the, the contrast. Keep adding a little bit more paint, you know, to uh, make it bleed more. Just like that, I'll just leave it there. Now, if you wanted to, you could also keep going with this beautiful color purple, you could go underneath the bird, you know, this way, you can kind of give it a visual to come this way, or you can add purple over here on this side or over here on the bottom. So I think that I'm gonna add just a little bit of purple in here in this area because I see purple here and here, okay? So you can, you can decide where you wanna do it, but again, I'm just gonna take some paint, rich purple, less water, a very deep purple. And my brush is fully loaded with a lot of paint. And watch how I do this now. I'm using the tip of the brush just to go to the edge of the hummingbird. Okay, and of course there's hard edges there. So let's get rid of those. My brush is clean. There's just water on it. And I'm gonna take the brush, just the edge of the color there, I'm pulling it and I'm just pulling it out. See like this, just kind of like pulling it out. So now you have a soft edge here and you could drop more color while it's still wet if you want. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn it this way. 
And I'm going to do the same thing that I did there right in this area here, right in here. Because I want the bird to kind of pop a little bit. The values here are the same. So I'm changing it by adding um, stronger contrast. So here we go. More purple, deep purple, using the tip of my brush to go in those little areas. And I'm gonna pull out those colors now with just water, that hard edge, the tip of the brush, pressing down and pulling, pulling that color out, blending it out. And see what's happening now. So your painting is starting to develop um, rich, contrast colors in different areas okay so now let's go back to these two shapes here and we're going to start to do the details on these flowers and then some details on the bird uh, if any of you have any questions please ask me or if you'd like to see me try to do something different again uh, a step that you didn't understand i'm more than happy to uh, demo it again so okay so now you have these two shapes here and they're lighter in value against dark contrast. And we wanna separate this flower from this one. And so what I like to do is I like to use the same color that's in here. And every time that you put another layer of watercolor on top of one layer, it's gonna turn a different uh, shade of color and that will bring this one forward. So I see uh, like a coral pink color and that of course is mixed with just a little bit of yellow and the pink. And that gives you kind of like a little coral color and it's light in value. And this is what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna come on the outside of that one with the tip of the brush. And again, there's that little hard edge. So what do we do? We clean the brush. Take a little bit of the extra water off and soften that edge by using the tip of the brush and dragging it, just blending it, you know, just dragging that edge there. So now you see that this shape here is separated from this one here. Okay. And this is an, this is a demo. So, you know, it's okay if you lose some of the little petal shapes or if you didn't stay in the long lines. Um, again, this is an art lesson. It's just for you to, to learn and understand about watercolor. And watercolors are so many different techniques, and this is just one of them. Um, if you do want to reclaim some of your flower shape, you could always take your brush. You can clean it. And what you could do is make sure that it's just uh, slightly damp, is you can just take a, uh, the tip and gently scrub away a little bit of the paint and you reclaim back that little part of the flower petal there, see? And I'll do that here too. Just, just using the tip of the brush, you can reclaim some of that little flower shape there, taking the extra water off and doing that. And if you have like um, some hard edges that you don't like, you know, again, you can just use the tip of your brush and soften those little hard edges you know kind of clean them up a little bit but you, you can always do this last you know this is not necessary right now so just wanted to show you that um, okay so now what i want to show you is how to do the inside of the flowers and you want to use a different color you know you want to use a darker color um, what i did with um these here see how this center is yellow and this one's kind of purple to kind of go with the harmony of flower so I'll just use um, purple on this one here and I'm gonna use my smaller brush, number two. And what I do is I just take a little bit of the purple and I just add little dots in the center, different shapes. Like that. Then, you can kind of trace around on the outside of it like this. 
You can do this sort of thing. Just use a tip. And then you can add little dots here. It's hard for me to paint when I'm holding the paper up like this. But you know, you get the idea. Like that. Well, just have fun. You could add, you could even add different colors in there if you wanted to. You can add a little bit of pink. You know, why not? Let's just let's just see what happens. You know, add a little bit of pink. You could even do this. You could take your brush and add a little bit of a splatter. Just, just have fun with it. And just a little splattering here and there. You don't have to do that, but you know, it's just something you can do. Um, let me show you that one now. So this one, let's just go with, um, let's just go with yellow. I'm just gonna go yellow. I'm just gonna do center like, like that. So it can be a little different and you can let that dry before you start doing um, these little details in there. And then with your little brush again, if you wanted to, you can add little petal details onto the flowers. You can separate the petals. And I'm using a pink. So this is where you add, you can add some details. And I always do details last, the very end, because when you paint a painting, you wanna work the whole area first. And then you can look at it from a distance and see uh, where it needs something or where you need to change something. So that's what I do. And this is the main story right here. This is the focal area. So I don't want to develop this one over here too much because uh, this is where you want the viewer to go. It's telling a little story about a hummingbird, you know, in the springtime um, going to, you know, just look for some nectar. And then you can come into the bird now and start doing little details. You know, you can start making um, these fun little, what I call little curves on him. I'll show you on this one here, little. So you can start to add these little details or details to the feathers again. Um, and let me just show you how to do that. So with the, a dark color, you can just go in here and make like little half C's you know, the little, just in a few areas. This gives it a little bit more interest to this area here. So just like that, see? And then if you see that the beak needs to be darker, um, mix a darker color and take a little bit of that yellow and purple. You can mix a darker color. And this is where you would um, start to notice where do you need to have stronger colors? And by doing these things last, it helps you see and visualize. You know, you can look to see where it needs um, stronger contrast. Like that. If your eye isn't dark enough, this is where you can take more of that purple and add it to your eye carefully. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have any questions? Mm -hmm. So at this stage, you're just building it up. And these even got a little lighter. So now I'm just adding a little bit darker details you know, just to um, punch this little area up a little bit more. Because again, this is the little focal area here. So I'm just bringing this up a little bit darker. 
Okay. And if you wanted to bring these areas here even darker, you could. And so I'll just um, demo that as well too, one more time. Okay, so I'll show you how to add more deeper value to this. And so you could do this. So this, this painting here has two layers of color right in here. The first one was the first big wash, light wash that we did. And then you added stronger contrast here with the purple. And so now if you wanted to, you could even add another layer. So I'll show you that. And then um, we'll show you how to do a little bit more details on the wings and then how to sign it. So let's just go with this again. I'm gonna turn it this way. And I, I feel like it needs a little bit darker contrast here in this area here. So I'm just gonna take some more of the purple, darker purple, and I'm using the tip of the brush, just the point of the brush. And here we go. Gently going around the head, building up this darker value here. Look at how I'm using the tip of my brush, almost like if it was a pin, you know, a pinned. Okay, now there's that hard edge again. So I'm cleaning my brush. And I'm pressing, as I'm using the tip of, of my brush, I'm pressing that edge out like this to blend out that hard edge. There, I like that. I like that much better. See what happened here? And while it's still wet, you can grab a little bit more of that purple and you can drop it in there if you want it to, to really make it darker because this is where I want the viewer to go, right in here. This is story. Right there, okay. And let's just make this a little bit darker in here, the wing just because I think that it just needs a little bit more purple in here. The top of the wing. Oops. See that? So we'll do that next. I'll turn it this way so you can see my brush. And I'm going to blend out those hard edges. If you need to soften some areas where it looks kind of rough like this right here, just take the tip and gently scrub a little bit like this. See how I'm scrubbing? And so now that edge is cleaned up right there. Okay, look at this edge here. This edge is all kind of rough looking. So again, just take your brush, make sure it's clean and doesn't have any paint on it. And gently just scrub it. You know, scrub that little edge there to soften it and so it doesn't look so rough. You know, you're softening that edge there. So there it is. Um, and then you can use your small little brush if you have one like this. And you can decide where you want to put a signature. What I like to do is... Um, you could use even a pencil, you know, you could take a pencil and wherever it's dry, you can add a little line to sign your name or you can um, sign it right under here, you know, going against the bird there. I think that's what I will do. And I'm gonna use, um, I'll just use purple, one of the colors that I have here. And you can just write your initials or you can sign your name. So if you don't feel comfortable, you know, using this, you could just take this and pretend like it's a pen and, you know, you can just do your initials, um, but first practice, you know, on a little paper, you know, how to, how to use this brush, like a, a like a pen, like if it was a pen, you know, first practice. 
And that way you um, feel comfortable when you get ready um, to sign your painting. So I'm just gonna sign my painting right, I think I'll sign it right here. There, it's not perfect, but you know, there it is. And once you let it dry, you can see where you need to add more, where you need to make some changes. Um, you know, it's, you know, it's best to like, if um, you're not, you know, uh, used to this, just set it down and let it dry. And then you can look to see where you need to add more, um, you know, where you, you need to, um, you know, just add more paint or details, but you want to keep the, the area here, the focal area, you know, the contrast and don't like get too busy in the background because you want to bring harmony. And then if you have a mat, what you can do with the mat is you can get a, a, a mat to put it over your painting so that you can visualize and see what it would look like um, if you were to get a mat and put it in a frame. You know, now this is just a, a mock-up mat. It's like my practice mat. You know, you can move it around this way to see where you want to frame. Um, if part of your painting you don't like, you know what, you could take a smaller mat and just mat maybe this side, you know, like this you know, maybe just do this part here, you know, just part of the painting. Um, so these are just ideas. Um, another idea that I'd like for you to try and challenge yourself is take this outline and, you know, do it on a bigger piece of paper and then maybe turn it this way and add the hummingbird, you know, at the bottom or this way, and you can practice uh, doing another painting. Um, another suggestion is changing the shapes of these flowers you know, make this into a daffodil or a trumpet flower. Um, use a different color combination, you know, for your next painting, you know, maybe just try three colors and, you know, just challenge yourself, uh, you know, keep pushing yourself to, um, to try this again. Um, the first time, you know, you know, you might not feel comfortable, but maybe the second time after looking at the video and trying it again, you're going to feel more comfortable and you're going to see that it's fun and, and I hope that you'll um, like it. So anyway, um, there it is. I don't know if, um, I, if you want me to, to demo something again that you um, want to see or I'm just Does anyone have some any little... questions or want to see Hilda give you some examples, maybe on a different piece of paper of something that you could do differently next time? Feel free to unmute yourselves and yeah. um, ask a question. And yeah, um, please do. If anyone has any questions. No. Hilda's really pretty. Really, really, <laughs> really, really good job. And you know what I like to say too is that because oftentimes I will read you the painting a couple times with my kids and my family. Um, but what I've noticed too, is that it doesn't matter how many times you do it, but each painting is going to look a little bit different, right? You're oh, painting yes. the same thing. And so that's the really neat part is that, you know, you'll still have the general idea of what you're painting, but next time it will look completely different. And then if you, like you said, you add colors and change colors, um, you know, things change a little bit. So it's just really neat and in, in being able to see, um, you know, doing it multiple times and seeing a different outcome each time. So that's really neat. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for joining us this morning. And I hope that you'll continue to paint. Don't give up. Uh, just keep painting. No, absolutely. Thank you. And I'm going to show you guys and share my screen really quick. I want to show you um, where it is that you can go to find these videos. So I'm sharing right now. Um, if you go to Valley Children's has our own YouTube, so it's youtube.com, you know, backslash Valley Children's playlist. The Epilepsy Support Program has our own playlist here. So you'll see it right here on the left. So if you click on the Epilepsy Support Program, it will pull up, um, I'm gonna pause it so it doesn't play anything for us. Um, there's my face right there, yay. Um, but it will pull up all of the videos that we have um, that we've already recorded for you. So we've got some things kind of over here, art for epilepsy. We've got virtual health series. You can see, kind of see me scroll down a little bit. We've got here our, um, we've got our medication videos that we um, just recorded that you can watch and share. And so just so that you know um, where you can go to see all of this, that's basically um, 
just post it on our YouTube site. So hopefully I'll get this video up for you maybe the next week or so. Um, we kind of crop it a little bit um, and make it look a little nicer so no one has to hear me talk the entire time. Um, but the videos will be up there for you to replay and just share with everybody else. So again, I'm um, very grateful for you um, being here, Hilda, and giving us this lesson. And my goodness, I'm super excited that um, we were able to do this again. And hopefully in the next few months, we'll be able to schedule something else. So thank you so much, Hilda. Thank you. Have Thanks a great everyone. day. Have a great day. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Bye.